on live. Hello everyone and welcome to Stratford Fire Station. My name's Steve Whelan and I am the watch manager of Blue Watch here. Tonight we're going to have you on our appliance viewed through this virtual screen and we will be showing you around the fire station, some of the things we do and also we'll be seeing if we get any call outs which may happen or may not and we'll be taking you along with us uh, to those call outs and you can get a first hand experience of what it's like to be in GMFRS. So let's start with a quick station tour. So this is our primary appliance, Golf 1 Zero Powerful 1. This goes to all the calls that we go to mainly. Um, so this could be fires, rescuing people from trapped cars, people in the water, could be anything really. Uh, and we take this basically first if required. We now move on to our second appliance. This is one of the first of the specials appliance that is based on station here. And this is our aerial. This is a hydraulic platform and it has the capability of reaching around 30 meters high. Uh, so we can rescue people at height or we can use it as a uh, water tower if we need to put water on a fire. And we can also use it for scene lighting or just getting a general overview of the incident by looking down at it. Moving on, this is our high volume pump. So if there's a big fire where we need a lot of water, um, we can use this uh, to gather water from a water source such as a river, a lake, anything like that and we can suck it into the big pump in the back and we can then pump it out to our fire engines and our firefighters will use that water to fight the fire. Moving on. So this is our kit storage area. So we carry all of our equipment uh, on us on the fire engine but when we're not using that or we need to uh, store it we'll put it in here so we have all the different uh, uniforms that we can use so we have our overcoats and undercoats and our overalls we also have lockers here so we can store all of our personal items when we're on the fire engine so we don't get them lost or damaged and uh, we can keep anything ready we need in here that's our personal item over here we've got our water kit, so if someone's stuck in the water what we can do is we can put this on and we can go to the water job and we can then enter the water safely. So it has a thermal layer on it, it also has a waterproof layer so we stay nice and warm and we stay nice and dry, we don't get wet. So this is the yard of the fire station. This is where we perform all of our drills, so our training. We can also host events in here and we test our appliances out here. As you can see, we've got two different training areas. We've got the main smokehouse, so we can fill this up with smoke and put firefighters in there and sim stimulate a fire uh, so that anybody who may be new to the service or just for general training anyway, they can go in there and pretend they're in a fire and have good practice. This uh, specific training area has around four stories and we have the capability of using the roof as well uh, so we can simulate lots of different rescues and lots of different scenarios that we may face day to day. This is our drill tower so mainly we can use this for working at height. We can also use this if we want to practice our ladder drills and also if we want to be spraying water up high. This is a great uh, facility at the fire station and we're very lucky to have it. Here's a storage shed, so we normally keep our uh, spare vehicle in here, so it's usually the training vehicle at the minute, uh, due to the fact of we are uh, basing training out of this station at the moment, so that's what's in there. Here is where our fire officers park, so the more senior officers in the brigade, uh, so station manager and above will park here. This is the current acting deputy chief Ben Earlham, he's going to give us a quick light demo of his vehicle. So currently we have uh, three vehicles here, and these are our brigade manager's vehicle. So we have the chief's vehicle, the acting assistant chief's vehicle, and then the acting deputy chief's vehicle. So these will go to large incidents, uh, ones where we need a higher level of incident command, and they will respond uh, via a pager, so they don't go out with a fire engine most times. They'll get an alert on their pager, and they'll go out on their own. We're now going to move on to the training department. 
If you pop on through here, this is one of the key features for the service. So this is where we train all of the new people. So as you can see, we've got a nice long area where we can seat people and we've got the ability to put things on the screen. We also have some different learning uh, documents around us. So we have the tape that we can use uh, to uh, show and educate people about what the different tapes are. We also then have at the back of the room there a standpipe, a BA set and a mock-up hydrant just so we can then further educate anybody uh, who's training here and we have the best uh, response possible from everyone in the service. If you'd like to come through this way, into the training stores. This is a big room full of our training kit. So if any kit gets damaged or broken, uh, we can come in here uh, and we can repair it or we can clean it down. We can also keep any spare kit in here. So we've got spare hoses and things so if we uh, want to just practice with the training or the trainees, we can come in here, grab all the kit out and uh, start training. So to my left here, we have quite a few fire extinguishers. We use these for uh, simulating uh, putting out a fire with them. And we also educate the different types of fire extinguishers we use. In these boxes, we've just got different pieces piece of kit we can use for training. And then we've got two positive pressure ventilation fans for the smoke cast. Here we've got a nice little service station so we can wash down any kit that um, has been used and it may be dirty. And then we have our racks of hose here that we can clean down. We then have some grab bags here that we carry different pieces of equipment in as well. If we come through the corridor, you can see our most recent class here, which is class 2021 slash three, where we had quite a few graduate and they've done really well and managed to get onto the fire appliances very recently. Through this room here, we have our specialist training department, which is where we teach uh, all the specialist skills, such as instant command and other tactical skills that may be needed uh, for any officers or things like that. Here's just our dry room along with our boiler, so we can dry out kit in here, and it's got our boiler which we can service as well if needed, which heats the whole station. As you can see through this room, this is our helmet room. We have a vast amount of helmets, all the way from probationary firefighter to the chief fire officers. Uh, these helmets are all in order of rank and they're all marked with the appropriate markings. If you'd like to follow me upstairs, we'll show you the upstairs area. So the station is quite big. We have a whole upstairs area, mainly for the crew. So through here is just a television room where the crew can relax and we can uh, just chill out and socialize. It's got a big TV there and a nice view of the front of the station, which is quite a nice view there. Through here, we've then got a pole drop. Uh, this pole is very uh, steep and uh, we will show you that later when we go downstairs, but uh, it's good fun dropping down the pole. Through here, this little corridor, uh, it just has our showers and uh, toilets. So we've got all of our facilities here to wash and uh, use the restrooms. So if there's a big fire, we can come and shower and get freshened up. And then we've also got the restrooms where we can use for day to day. Through here is our mess. So we've got a nice big table where we can gather for meals. And if any other stations want to come join us, uh, we've also got the nice new kitchen here. Uh, we have uh, a lot of meals cooked in here, including um, a nice little station here where we can leave meals to be left heated if we're cooking a big meal. We've got lots of different cupboards, which we keep food stocked in uh, regularly. Each watch has their own refrigerator here as well. And generally, we try and have a healthy diet and keep uh, all the protein and stuff like that built up in our diet so that as firefighters, we can execute our job uh, pretty swiftly and we are not going to get ill. Out here is our nice little balcony. It's quite dark tonight, uh, but you can just make out that we've got our nice chairs and stuff along here. And we've also got a barbecue where we can cook some food. So, moving on. This is our uh, another crew area. So as you can see here, we've got Noah here just checking out uh, stuff on his uh, Mac. 
And then we've also got a nice big pool table where we can play and socialize again, along with a big TV here, which we can play sports and stuff like that. Um, so it's just another nice area where we can come and socialize and have some downtime between jobs and shouts and stuff like that so that our welfare is again important to us so we can just you know relax be us and uh, have some downtime between different things we're going to do on the fire station heading downstairs we can drop down the pole drop So first of all, this is our main area uh, where we can all gather. So this is kind of like a muster point. Um, and this is the console. So through here, we get all of our mobilization messages on the printer, as I'll demonstrate. We can then see what call out we get and where it is, any additional information and stuff like that. So as you can see, the last call out uh, that has been put through is a building fire at Waterside Street in Salford, which uh, Ben is now going to, as you can see on the pager. Uh, so they'll be heading to that. And the greenhouse is on fire, apparently. So interesting job, that one. I'm going to demonstrate as well what it's like if we uh, we're going to have a fire. Test turn out, disregard. So if we were to get a fire, uh, a fire call, so a proper one, uh, the bells would ring through like that and everyone would know to come to the fire engine and we could go out the doors pretty swiftly. So through here, this is our main uh, office area. So this is where all of the offices are. So through here is the group manager and station manager uh, office. So basically the borough command are here and they uh, can work or they can just be here in the daytime um, and get all their jobs done. Through here, this is the area manager office. So this is the training and development department um, base. So we have in here just lots of different memorabilia and a nice little area for the area manager to be. This is uh, the ACFO's office uh, and that's a fire call. So we're going to a building fire domestic at Waterside Street and there's a fire spreading to the house. Right guys, so what we're going to be heading out to now is a greenhouse, uh, as you saw earlier, uh, that the original fire engines went to, uh, but the greenhouse fire is now spread into a property, so they've increased the amount of fire engines going, so we're going to go down there and help protect that house and stop any fire from spreading. Go 58 Papa 1 to FC. Go ahead. Um, releasing Golf 58 Papa. Uh, releasing um, Golf 1 0 Papa 1 prior to stop. Um, fire's been contained. Uh, no further risk of running to house. Roger that to FC out. Go 58 Papa 1 out. So what we've just saw there is we've just responded to the fire, but the fire was out already. So we've been stood down by control uh, to tell us basically we're not needed. So then we're now available for any of the fires in the area. So we're providing that extra response. Apologies, I'm like severely lagging tonight.
So day-to-day -day activities that we may do as a fire station is we may train, we may go out and do community work, so educating people around the community. Again, preventing uh, any fires from happening by educating. We then also can do all sorts of things as well as that. So we could end up uh, joining other stations doing training and we could just some days be doing classroom work. So looking at a PowerPoint and just identifying different things that we may need to work on. And we could be learning about risks around our area as well. now back on station, uh, we can continue with our talk. So moving on, uh, from in here, we've got our community room. So any member of the community can book out this room and they can use it for uh, different activities they may need to do or clubs that they may run. This is our BA service room. So we can, uh, again, clean down equipment, anything like that. Uh, we can also replenish our BA sets and ensure that we are in an operational order and uh, ready when the next fires are. Through here is our main reception and the watch office. So this is where people can come in and make inquiries and also where firefighters can work. That concludes the tour of the station. So uh, we'll just have a little downtime for a minute uh, while we get sorted as we just got back on station. And then we'll hop into some more different things like a Q&A uh, from the chat. Stay tuned. To... Okay, let's go over some questions then. Uh, I'm just going to head up to the camera. Um, the answer to Jamie. Uh... So, can you join on mobile? The answer to that is unfortunately not at the minute. We don't support Xbox or mobile due to the way the game runs. It's quite a heavy running game, so um, you're going to need quite a bit of power to uh, run this game, so you're going to need quite a good spec uh, PC or laptop. Some of our members do run this game on a laptop, but it's advised you run it on a PC. Uh, so sorry, not Xbox or mobile at the minute. Next question, is the HP... God, bravo, zero, three to F2. Sorry about that. The next question is, is the HVP fully functional? Yes, yes it is. What we can do is we can drop off the sled on the back and we can also pick it up again. I'm sure we can get a uh, we can get a demonstration of the HVP later on. We tend to use B-tools to take off the modules from the HVP off the sled and place them in areas. Uh, but yes, you can drive around uh, with the HVP module uh, sled on the back and um, you can lower it, drop it off and back on again and uh, we don't pump with it 
we just RP pumping it. Next question is uh, the amount of shouts Stretford gets. So it is quite varied. Um, we have different uh, calls out each day, but I'd say in game, the amount of shouts we get, depending on uh, the daytime and stuff, is normally about five, between five and 10 shouts a day in game, uh, unless we're on a big, big job. How many vehicles do we have in game? Currently, we have two pumps at Salford. We have uh, uh, one pump at Stretford. We have a HVP and we have an aerial here at Stretford. Uh, and then we also have three to four officer cars. So vehicles in game vary uh, depending on what stations we have in and what stations we may be uh, bringing in. So if we have a big job, we can always insert vehicles. So we always insert vehicles if we need them. Um, for just the additional RP and the additional aesthetics. So if you remove all your models from uh, your inventory, it depends on case by case basis. If you're a known leaker and you're a known um, person who's not very supportive of our community and has a lot of um, feuds with us, so you've taken our stuff and stuff like that, you may not be banned, it just depends on who it is and uh, the amount of time you've been banned. So Stretford is a pump, a uh, high volume pump and a hydraulic platform. Uh, my favorite station and vehicle, I'd say my favorite station would be Hyde and my favorite vehicle would probably be the hydraulic platform. How many stations are there? So in game, we uh, switch between game, uh, I mean stations, sorry. So we averagely um, switch between them every week to two weeks. So we have uh, two stations in game normally, unless we have um, two smaller stations, uh, we may add a, then a retained station like Marple or something like that um, to support us. But normally at one time, we'll only have two stations in game. So in-game, uh, the amount of HVPs and hose layers, so we can insert them, but currently in-game there's only one, but we have all of the different ones across Greater Manchester Fire uh, to our disposal that we can then um, in insert into the game using the admin command. So if we need anything, we can pretty much insert it. We have almost every vehicle in Greater Manchester Fire, so if we need uh, an extra vehicle that we can make up, by calling it in uh, on control as an assistance message, it can be inserted. Uh, I think we've covered that um, one about the favorite vehicle and station. So how many stations overall? There's around 41 stations in the whole of Manchester. Um, we have most of them built uh, it's just, again, we transfer different stations and go through. We do not have the HQ, but it has been discussed about making, but we mainly base our offices out of stations like this, as we showed earlier in the tour. Um, we have the Scorpion in game, but the only issue with it is, is the boom on it is a bit glitchy. Um, if you look in further videos on our YouTube channel, you will then find out uh, different things about the Scorpion. I think there's a demo on there in one of the videos, and there's also a few of them turning out. So yeah, we've gone through um, two different Scorpion booms, um, but mainly uh, the only issue with it now is it tends to be a bit glitchy when we drive it. So um, it's currently off the run, even though we do have Salford in. Uh, but yes, we have a working Scorpion. And um, if anyone doesn't have any more questions, just keep posting them in the chat. Uh, but we're now gonna do a demo with the hydraulic platform. Right, so the hydraulic platform. So uh, this uh, piece of equipment uh, is quite useful. So as I mentioned earlier, it's got lots of different uses. So it's 
primarily a vehicle that has a high reach. So we're looking about 30 meters high around that area. And um, it can be used for water, it can be used for lighting, it can be used for just general looking over an incident and stuff like that. So a question there is how long do we spend on each call? So it really varies. If we have a quite a big job, we would spend maybe a whole SSU, so about an hour and a half to two hours on it. Uh, but most jobs we only spend around 10 to 15 minutes if it's a proper job. But if it's maybe a automatic fire alarm or anything like that, we'll spend around five minutes on it. So here's our hydraulic platform. What we're going to demonstrate now, we're just going to take it all the way up to its highest um, elevation. And then we'll do a quick uh, demo of it, squirt in some water. Um, and then we will um, do some other things with it as well. So usually to pump water from this, we'll either need to put it into a hydrant, uh, which is not particularly favored, or we'll use a pumping appliance, which is normally what happens to boost it and send some water up at high pressure. So we use the stabilizers on it to make sure that it is level. So we can't really have it at a slant uh, to prevent it tipping over and stuff like that. So we uh, just use the stabilizers to give that, uh, that levelness on it. Hey Ben, Ben. This is the maximum elevation uh, of our aerial. So it's quite capable of going high. So it, it does reach the top of most of the high rises in the game. Uh, so we can perform rescues pretty much from any height. As you can see, we've got some quite bright spotlights. Uh, I'll have to bring it down as uh, the ace has got a shout. Yeah, it seems my services are required. Um, there's a carbon dioxide alarm um, on Vice Street, which is just over the water in Salford. Uh, it's just an alarm sounding in a house. Um, me and Salford's first bumper attending. Uh, I'm just popping over there as the hazardous materials and environmental protection officer. Sounds like we're going as well. So what happens now, I'll uh, get on the radio into control and tell them that I'm mobilising to the incident and then um, I'll turn out myself.
Go off, Bravo zero three to FC. Go ahead. Uh, Goth Bravo zero three to FC. Uh, show me mobile incident. Watch that. I've sent. Goth Bravo zero three out. So I'll just stir my kit before I leave. And off I pop. So I'm just reloading into the game, but um, once I get back in, what we'll be doing is we will do um, a quick demonstration of the different capabilities of where the aerial can reach on a building. So say if we need to rescue someone from a building, uh, we will then I will then show you how the aerial can do that and the different pivot it can reach. So let's go through. While she's it, while she's loading, then no, I'll pull the HTP out for him. Someone might see that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, drop that down. So some questions that we've got here. What do we get if we get a call on training? So we can either go on training reserve, which means that we'll only get um, called out if there's a life risk. But other than that, if we get a standard call, we're going to just have to pack up as quick as we can and go to it. Um, Salford. So Salford will be featured probably later. Uh, we're just focusing on uh, Stretford at the minute, uh, as they're on. They're running quite a few calls at the minute. Um, so we're just going to be running Stretford at the minute, and we'll get Salford involved a bit later on. So the high volume pump, um, it's quite just basically what it says, a very big pump. Um, we can drop it off on the back as you can see and we'll demonstrate some capabilities that we have with this appliance as well. So as you can see here, we've got nice capability with the aerial to get it at quite a nice pitch. We can uh, rescue people from roofs like this. We can also, uh, again, get into tight spaces with it. Um, and it's just a great piece of kit to use uh, whenever we need it. So that's going to conclude the aerial and HVP for now.
Uh, we'll be moving on to some other stuff. So thank you everyone who's uh, tuning in still. Uh, we've got lots of things planned for the rest of the stream. Uh, hopefully we'll get some more call-outs as well. And we'll get Salford involved. Uh, maybe go down there soon as well. A uh, question there in the chat, um, beaver tail and the Hagland. So uh, we're currently getting the Hagland built and the beaver tail um, is also in game. Uh, I think it's a really nice addition and it really helps with wildfires. So yeah, currently it's just Golf 1-0 and Golf 5-8 on the map, but we do switch around different stations on the same map uh, and we're always developing on the map. So we're always adding new, the new buildings and phasing out old ones. And we are planning on uh, getting a new map completely soon as well. If you look in um, the development log, uh, if you're in the Discord, uh, you'll be able to see some uh, new additions, which will be coming in very shortly. So um, I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in today. Uh, that's going to wrap up today's stream as we've got some busy things to do um, and crack on with. Be sure to tune in next time where we may go around Salford and uh, explain a bit more. Uh, but I think today's been really good. Thank you all for watching. If you any, have any questions, remember that the Discord's always there uh, where you can ask some questions to us. And uh, don't forget to keep an eye on the YouTube channel where we regularly post different videos and clips of the service. Quick question there as well. Will the game function good on MacBook? Yes. Uh, game functions quite well on MacBook from uh, experiences. I ran the game on MacBook for quite a while and it was, I never really had any issues with it. It's, as long as you've got a, an all right spec MacBook and it's not like completely ancient, um, it should be absolutely fine. It should run as well as it would on Windows. Lower end laptops will also run this game. Uh, just make sure that you've got a good Wi Fi connection um, and that your um, computer also is updated and it's not too old. Another question that may be uh, asked quite a bit is group accepting. So at the minute, we're slowed down with group accepting due to current issues we've had with leaking and maps being. Um, given out with our appliances on so uh, we're going to think about um, accepting soon um, but it's pretty much hit or miss depending on when we accept and also if we are happy with your inventory so once again thank you for tuning in uh, that's going to conclude today so uh, we'll see you all next time